Christian faith. By the way, we have an update on her, which is positive tonight. Just last night, at least 21 people were killed in an explosion in Nigeria as they prepared to watch their team play in the World Cup. And that's the same country where some 300 schoolgirls were kidnapped just months ago by a group that reportedly just snatched another 90 villagers recently in the same area, Boko Haram. Retired Air Force Lieutenant General Tom McInerney is a Fox News contributor. General McInerney, good to see you. And so that's the question, is whether we are now seeing, contrary to the representations we heard, representations on the campaign trail during the last presidential race from our commander-in-chief, a dramatic rise in terrorism and al-Qaeda-affiliated groups. Absolutely, Megan. There has been a dramatic rise in uh, radical Islam sweep, sweeping across not only the Middle East, but Central Africa. You just showed a couple scripts on Nigeria. Boko Haram kidnapped 300 women. What does Boko Haram mean? Western education is a sin. They are affiliated with al-Qaeda in Iraq. Uh, you go into North Africa. What's going on in Libya today? What's going on in uh, Syria and sweeping into uh, uh, Iraq. Clearly, it has got its global nature to it, including Afghanistan, where the Taliban are really de facto a radical, not de facto, they are radical Islamists associated with al Qaeda. So it is a very dangerous ideology that is growing because they have been successful. And I also believe, Megan, because we have been giving indications of withdrawal. Iraq, two and a half years ago, Afghanistan coming the end of this year. We are sending signals to radical Islam around the world that we are leaving the battlefield. Well, but let me challenge you on that. I mean, if we hadn't gone into Iraq, if we hadn't gone into Afghanistan, I mean, this, these people, they hated us before 9-11 and they would have continued to hate us. What, what about U.S. policy has caused these groups to rise? Is it something we've done as a country or isn't it more about who we are and what we believe in that just causes them to hate and now causes them to grow. It's who we are. Boko Haram. Western education is a sin. I'm not saying we should not have gone into Iraq or into Afghanistan right. because I believe. But I'm saying and whether you had a Republican them. or a Democrat in the White House, do you believe Correct. we'd be where we are right now? Yes, except if we left a force behind in Iraq. I think we would have been able to keep a stability in there and balance as they make this transition. When we pulled out and Maliki, who was clearly inclined and, and a, a proxy for Iran, and he got rid of all the Sunnis, that's what's creating the problem here mm -hmm. today. And that's why, look, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, the Emirates, uh, Qataris, Kuwaitis are supporting ISIS. They are funding them. And so we're now caught in the middle of a war between the Shia and the Sunnis. And we've got to realize, let's let them fight this war out. Let's not put Amer more American troops in, and let's certainly not be a proxy air force for Iran. Okay, this but let's, is say, a hard but let's say we do that. Let's say we let them fight it out, and it doesn't seem like there's anybody for us to root for involved in, this, in all of this. But if we emerge from this battle, if, if the world emerges from this, with an Islamic caliphate, you know, a group that, that stems across Syria uh, into Iraq, and who knows how far beyond, and one of the missions will be to kill Americans, you can bet on it. At what point do we intervene, General? I mean, what, then they go into Jordan. Do we step in then? They attack Israel. Do we step in then? How big does this caliphate have to get before we, ha we step in and it's World War III? Well, I don't think it's going to be big because the Iranians are already stepping in, and there's going to be a fight between the Shia, the Iranians, and those Iraqis, and the Sunnis that are composed of those nations that I'm talking about. That caliphate is not going to expand exponentially like people think it is. There is a big fight coming on between them. Let the Muslims sort this one out. If it gets out of control and they have a large force, that plays right into our strength. Force on force is where we win. It took us 21 days to take Iraq down. We'll win that fight, Megan. What, what could we be doing differently here at home when it comes to this expansion of radical Islam? Excellent question. Know thy enemy. Let's understand this threat we're at. This administration has a different view. I'll give you an example. Major Nadal Hassan, 
workplace violence. Even though he's convicted and given the death sentence, the Army still has not said that that was a terrorist act and awarded those people wounded and killed with the Purple Heart and the appropriate awards. If you go into any of the uh, curricula in the FBI and DOD, they've taken the word Islam and radical Islam out of it. So we are not acknowledging that this is a very dangerous ideology that we are fighting. We are looking the other way. We are too politically correct, and we must change that. It's interesting. I mean, we have certainly seen in Iraq this month that leaving the war doesn't really end it, and erasing Islam from these textbooks doesn't get rid of the ideology. General McInerney, good to see you. Thanks, Megan. Well, it seems like everyone.